this is a new account here and we haven't had time to label anything so I have no idea where this outdoor unit is but it's not running the place is being renovated but the heat should be on so let me show you a few tips for finding units when you have no idea where they might be now before I get into uh, tracing out the equipment let's just see if we can learn anything from the stat now I already know that I don't have power to the stat so what I'm interested in is what do these circuits look like and I'm doing this because it's you know, I think it's very hard to get to the indoor unit and I don't know where the outdoor unit is yet so between common and R this is looking like the secondary and all the stuff you take with a grain of salt nothing is going to be extremely predictable from this because you can have back feeding and all that kind of stuff that looks like the contactor coil does not look like a short to ground okay from the fan wire to common that also looks like hmm, some kind of control might be going into a board or something a little small board relay who knows but yeah, I'm not seeing any issues here. Call for heat, looks fairly normal. I wonder if the breaker is just off because of the demo. So let, let's see what's going on here. All right, got the toner hooked up. Just using a clip there to hang it. I'm on R and C. If R and C had power, I would go C to Y for the outdoor and C to W for the indoor. I've got this adjusted. Um, by the way, the reason I'm going R to C is so I can get a signal to the indoor and outdoor. Why does the outdoor have R? It's only for defrost. It's only for the defrost board. It will run just fine without R. So if you have a no defrost, be sure that you check defrost board power all right so when we get close we should get our signal all right now the reason that i do this is just because i don't want to be wasting my time crawling around looking for a unit if it's not the right one we are on the right one and the magic wire leads to a tam <laughs> great <laughs> oh tams 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 mm, don't even get me started on those these tams always light up like a Christmas tree. I'm gonna get in here and see if I have trouble codes. I, I do not need all these LED lights. This is too much. Give me some lights where I can hit a button and it'll spit out something VRV style, you know, or just a single light with trouble codes. I don't need all of this trash here. Anyways, the other very irritating thing is I can't take this door off without killing the power. So I can't even get in there and check the transformer and stuff like that without all of that disappearing, potentially. You know, to be honest, I can't remember if these save codes or, or what they do. All right, let's get into it. There's three boards in this unit. And I'm looking at this board, which is flashing, like I said, like a Christmas tree, but I have a fault LED there that's flashing once. Well, that would make sense. There's the problem, or is it? <laughs> hmm. Whenever you have a fuse blow like that, it looks, when they're, it's hard to say, when they're really bad burnt, like it's a really hard blow, chances are you do have a short, even if you can't find it. But in a case like this, I'm gonna throw something in here to take its place, and then if I have to hunt for an intermittent short, I'm gonna start at the outdoor unit every single time. Because nine times out of 10, it's out there, it's where there's vibration, something is rubbed through uh, on a discharge line, you know, heat and vibration. That's where you start. All right. I've got the transformer rescue fuse here. We don't have a short. I moved my toner to um, yellow so I wouldn't send voltage. <coughs> oh, God. 
<coughs> Man, I hate addicts. That's one of the many reasons I had to get out of residential. I got a magnet on here. Um, so that's just going to keep power to the unit. And I'm going to go find the outdoor. Picked up this little set of Allens fairly recently. I'll put a link in the description, but it's great for locking these doors open. There's a big boy right here. Uh, by the way, you'll notice the tone changed, and that's that's a function on this fluke, probably others as well. But if you short the wires together, the tone will change, and that way, if you're in a bundle, you can confirm that you've got the right pair. To you young guys, make sure you take care of your knees. You'll realize things don't last forever when you turn 30. <laughs> that's when you start feeling it. Uh, this pad right here, CLC, I've had it for a long time, very good pad, but I've just been carrying it with this chain and these clasps. All right, let's get in here and see if we can find a short. I really don't like when the low voltages run into here. It needs to be taken in, up, and through, and then your connection's made neatly up in here. I did try to tidy this up. Uh, here, here's a problem. This low pressure switch has been bypassed, which I'm okay with because this vintage of train defrost board is horrible. Absolutely horrible. This this rectangular style train. Uh, we were told by train at one point uh, that this was a approved OEM fix because these boards are so bad, but this is not correct. When you do this, you need to run the low pressure switch uh, in series with Y. So we'll we'll need to figure that out. But uh, anyways, let's dig into it. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling on wires and I'm gonna be listening to see if this tone changes. And if it does, then I know that I've kind of narrowed down my short so let's do that all right no luck there so I'm gonna use this needle jumper I made to jump out this board okay contact now by the way it's not running because I have high voltage off but contact or energizing fine now if I do this again it'll have a delay so I'll go on Y out just a few times okay nothing 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 all right let's keep going well i didn't find anything out here but i did correct this issue so now the low pressure switch y out is going through the low before it comes up and goes through the high and back to the, the contactor so that's done i did i'm gonna check the indoor unit and if i don't find anything up there i'm just gonna put a fuse in and we're gonna run it and just check it for a while and then that's all we can do sometimes fuses do go bad it's it's rare but i've seen it more than once not showing any shorts um i'm gonna jump it out but let me show you something here oops let's go like that see that right there that 24 volts being exactly 24 without being loaded that's a sign that the transformer tap is the primary tap is probably incorrect with an unloaded circuit you want to see probably 26 and a half 27 somewhere in there so we'll we'll check that out too but let me jump this unit out all right so watch this our supply voltage is 208 and i am of course find this way too many times i am on the 230 tap let's get that fixed Let's look at what our secondary is now. See that? That's what you want to see. Unloaded, somewhere in there, 27, 28. All right, got that fixed. Found this wire right here uncapped. I think this might have gone to it, but you don't want to leave that uncapped unless you want a manual reset condensation switch, <laughs> as in replace the fuse reset. Because let me show you, you know, if this little pigtail happens to flop around and touch ground, and then um, you, it trips, it's 
gonna short, see that? What this is for is like an alarm, so you can send 24 volts out to whatever alarm you've got that'll indicate that the switch is tripped. All right, isn't that great how the uh, connectors just lay here in the condensate pan? <laughs> mm. This is probably our short. See that? This this one's hard to see, but you can see the copper. There's there's some copper right there. So that could um, in defrost, it could short out. You know, when a fuse blows, you don't just throw in a new one. You really you really do need to go through everything. This is probably our issue. Not a fan of how you have to run the wires in here. This can be fixed, but it's like, you know, that just just janky. And it looks like that looks like oil and feels like oil. I've got to spray that and see if we have a leak. Something's not looking right. Yep. That's a leak, all right. <laughs> Who would have thought a blown fuse would turn into a new unit? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll either try to repair that or we'll replace the coil. We'll just see where it goes from here. But um, my, oh my, what a can of worms. All right, so unit's not under warranty. I don't know how long the compressor was running on a low refrigerant charge. I mean, the compressor is currently running, but who knows what kind of condition it's in. Individually taped all these wires, taped up the bundle. I've got pro tape over top of it, and that'll definitely stop future shorts. All right, well, I mean, in an ideal world, I, I would love to redo this I, I did get that taken care of at least but <coughs> oh god i hate insulation <laughs> i gotta roll on to the next service call though so we're gonna get them some emergency heat until they decide what to do i should mention that i have successfully brazed these before uh you gotta use a special braze and there there's definitely some technique involved but I have fixed them before, and if I do end up fixing this one, I'll try to film it. Still got liquid in the system. That's good news right there. So, awesome. Maybe this compressor will be just fine. I did check, and it is running, so that's good.